Hello, welcome to the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for the week beginning Monday, March 30th, 2015 and ending Friday, April 3rd. Uh, just so you know, a couple things. This is the end of the quarter on Tuesday. We'll talk about what that means for the stock market here in a little bit. And also, we have uh, the U.S. stock market closed on Friday this week. Banks are open. Stocks are closed, always a strange situation because of uh, Good Friday ahead of the Easter holiday. Here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. We've got uh, some wobbling back and forth here in the month of March. We've been down once and then back up and then down. Uh, it's not a huge range overall, but we've had some decent individual days of movement. Uh, you can see, if you really look at this, we had that 13 sell signal back in February. That led to the first rollover in March, finally. And then we got the nine bar startup phase to the downside which completes the uh, exhaustion from that 13 signal. So in other words, once that's happened, that's all you really need to get from the signal. Curled back up and got back up near the highs and near the static trend line, the green line from that move. And then we rolled over here this week and headed back towards the lows of the month. Uh, so that's the ES side. Let's look at the NASDAQ 100 index. Uh, so the S&P was up 4 on Friday. Uh, NASDAQ 100 up 17.6 after being down sharply on Wednesday. Here's the SOX back up 19 after a big, big sell-off on Wednesday. Biotech index bouncing back 68, also a big sell-off on Wednesday when we broke that 10-day moving average. Google retreated six points on Friday and was down for the week. Apple lost another point on Friday and was also down for the week. Uh, we'll take a look at the VIX, which had uh, risen during the week, obviously back to that green static trend line, but rolled over Friday when the market bounced a little bit. Crude oil closing down a couple of points again uh, at 48 and, and change after ra rallying back up slightly uh, over uh, earlier in the week. So we're back in the 40s on crude oil, and then uh, gold was down after being up on Thursday. Here's that crude oil chart. 48.87 is the actual closing price from uh, on Thursday, on Friday. All right, so let's also look at the trend real quick. Uh, average 1.16, that's the 10-day moving average right now. Uh, here's the volume number. This was kind of the disappointing part this week. We started out with two of the lightest volume days of the year so far. One of them definitely the lightest volume day of the year. That was Monday. You can see that at about 1.45 billion shares. Tuesday started out even worse early, but got up to 1.49. Then Wednesday, we, we really hit the volume on that sharp sell-off day. That was a great trading day for us. Tuesday was strangely good, too, but it shouldn't have been based on the volume. We got over 2 billion shares on Wednesday. Thursday was solid at almost 1.9, and then Friday it disappeared again. Friday was as flat as can be in the markets, and you're going to see that here uh, when we look at the 10-minute chart of the week on the ES and then the NQs. Uh, here's a look at what we saw. So you look at last Friday's close is just off the left edge of the screen. We had a very flat Monday. Monday was disappointing. No volume, right? Just sideways. Tuesday was strangely good for us, even though the volume was not that great. We had really nice trades on Tuesday. Wednesday, a little gap up, sold off a little early, and then it just really accelerated. That was obviously the big day of the week. Thursday, good volume and, and some opportunities, but strangely, more of a measuring day after the big move down on Wednesday. And then Friday, you know, volume disappears and you've got a Friday. Everybody's heading out for the, the weekend. And look how flat that was. I mean, that was just um, the, the afternoon. This, everything after the first hour was just ridiculous. Basically, the S&P in a five-point range for the whole last two-thirds of the day. Almost unbelievable. So uh, that was the trading environment for the week. We'll also show you the NASDAQ side so you can see what that looked like. It's very similar, obviously. And look how flat that NASDAQ is on Friday. Woo! All right, so again, we did have a nice week, though, overall. Some real nice trades on Tuesday and Wednesday in particular. Um, and uh, Friday uh, Friday was just the real bust as far as I'm concerned. Did very little on Friday. All right, let's take a look at the data that's coming out this week, and let's put together a picture for this short trading week from the stock perspective. Uh, so we've got uh, Monday. We've got the uh, personal income and spending data coming out. Uh, then we've also got uh, PCE prices. That's the core price number. It's an inflationary gauge. Uh, and pending home sales 30 minutes into the market. On Tuesday, we've got the S&P Case-Shiller 20 Cindy Index of Housing Price Index. We've got the Chicago PMI. That's a big number, 15 minutes in. Consumer Confidence, 30 minutes in, another big number. April 1st hits April Fool's Day. 
Consumer confidence is uh, already passed at that point. MBA mortgage index, this is Wednesday. The ADP employment report, ISM services, construction spending, the weekly crude oil inventories, and then auto and truck sales in the afternoon. Some big numbers there, too, although I'd say Tuesdays, Chicago PMI and consumer confidence are bigger. Thursday, we've got the initial and continuing jobless claims data. That's the weekly number. But we've got the trade balance number. That's a very important number that can cause the market to gap. And then factory orders and natty gas. But keep in mind, Thursday is the end of the week this week for the stock market. Friday, the markets are closed. It appears they're still going to put out. This is strange because the banks are open. So uh, the stock market's closed, but the government's open. So we're going to have the non-farm payroll unemployment rate number come out on a Friday when the markets are closed and not able to react to them. That should make for an interesting Monday next week. And then we've got Easter on Sunday. Uh, so what's the focus point this week? Well, first of all, there is some exciting data on Tuesday, but unfortunately, this is end of quarter. It's why this Friday was so flat as people left early for the weekend, but also because there's nothing left to do. A lot of these stocks are pegged to the prices that the funds and institutions want them at for the end of quarter statements. So it's going to be tough to see much action Monday and Tuesday. Maybe that data can shake us around a bit, but uh, don't be surprised if it doesn't. Then, first day of a new quarter, it's, it's off to the races. You can get a lot of movement. So Wednesday is wide open for whatever. And Thursday, we do have that trade balance number, and again, still early in the quarter. So a lot of times, as soon as quarters start, things start moving because all the bottled up energy, the funds have been holding on to trading opportunities because they've been just waiting for those statements to print and get their prices pegged for the next quarter. So you sometimes see the market start moving right away on the first of a month, on the first of a new quarter. That might lead to some movement Wednesday and potentially Thursday. But remember, you know, even with that date of Thursday morning, people are going to be leaving for a nice long weekend. So um, it's going to be interesting. I would say Wednesday's the day to focus on. Maybe some early action Tuesday and then Thursday early action as well. Uh, Monday's a question mark as always, but uh, we will see. We'll be in the lab calling it as usual. Charts brought to you by E Signal 12 as they always are. If you do find our videos useful, please like them on YouTube. It does help us out. You know, we will be in the lab helping you make money. If you have not taken a trial of our services, you can do so. Have a great weekend.